Good morning, so welcome to another online service with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so stoked that you are with us this morning. Hey, if it's your first time or you, you haven't seen my face before, my name is Sarah Vailoa and I'm one of the pastors here at Soul. I'm on team and we're just pumped to have you here with us this morning. So I want to encourage you to feel at home with us. There is a place for you. You belong here already, okay? So hopefully you can lock that down and just know that, yeah, we're pumped that you're with us this morning. Hey, we're a church that is all about participating, not just spectating in life, but actually getting involved. Actually, yeah, not sitting back, but saying, yep, here I am, here I am. And this morning in worship, I really encourage you to say, God, here I am. Wherever here I am finds you, whatever circumstance you're in, why don't you just get up off your chair or wherever you are and enter into praise and worship this morning. We're gonna have a time of meeting with Jesus. And I can tell you truth right now that Jesus is ready and here to meet you wherever you're at. And so we're, as Tia and the team lead us in praise and worship this morning, lean into that fact that God is with you. Yeah, I may not be with you, I may be on a screen, but God is in the room wherever you're at right now. So why don't you stand up, why don't you engage your faith, why don't you meet with Jesus this morning as Tia and the team lead us.
Healing 
Hey, what an awesome time of worship we've had with Tia and the team. So good. It's so good to just lift our eyes off what's going on here and now and go, actually, God, I'm focusing in on you. I'm honing in on you. Hey, I'd love to pray for you this morning. I don't know where life finds you. Maybe life has been really awesome for you and things are looking good. Level two's back on and you're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe there's some been some great things to celebrate in your world, but maybe there's, there hasn't. Maybe life is still hard. Maybe there's some challenges in your way. And I just wanna pray for us. I wanna pray for us as a community of salt that, yeah, that we would just know God's presence. So why don't you pray with me this morning? God, I just lift up every single person that's tuning in right now. God, I pray that they would know you for real. They'd know your peace and your presence. God, I pray that you would go before every family, God, every household represented that's tuning in. God, I pray that you would be with families and kids as they transition back into work and into school or daycare or, or uni or whatever, wherever life finds them, Lord God. Pray, Lord, that there would just be an incredible sense of peace and victory, Lord God. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would just make yourself known and near to every single person, Lord God. Thank you that you are not a far off God, but you are a personal and loving God who wants the best for us. So God, I just pray for every household that they would know that for real in their lives. They would feel and know your love and your peace, your protection, and you just going before us as we step into a new week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love, love that we can just talk to God through prayer. Love that he, he is not far off like what I prayed, but He is close to you. Hey church, I don't know if you know, but we are a church that believes in giving, believes in tithing, believes in being generous. And I've been reading my one year Bible this week, every day, just reading a little bit of God's word and getting it into me. And I was really encouraged in Matthew 10, Verse 39, it says this, If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. I love that. I feel like that scripture is so loaded. I don't know about you, but I'm selfish by nature. I really am. I want it my way. And I think we're all like that. I think that's the state of our human hearts and human condition. But I love that that the word challenges selfish living. It challenges the core of that. Say, no, no, don't hold on to your life. Give up your life to me. Entrust your life to me. Entrust your kids to me. Entrust your job to me. Entrust your finance to me because that is where you'll find true life. And I find many people, even myself at times, have tried to hold on to my life or fill the empty spaces of my life with things or, or relationships or filling the void that I felt with stuff. And, but actually God's word says, no, no, to find true life, give it up. Give it to me and there you'll find what it really means to live. So as you give this week, as you continue to tithe, uh, you can find ways to do that on our website by just clicking the Give button. As you do that, realize that you're actually finding life as you give. You're finding life as you tithe. You're finding life as you give away your life in, in, what, in the selfish sense, but actually you're gaining so much more when you're going Jesus' way. So be encouraged by that thought as you are generous this week, as you continue to tithe, as you continue to build the kingdom of God, you will find life. You won't lack, but you will gain because of that. Love that thought. It's so good. So much truth in the word of God. And can I encourage you too to make sure that you're, you're not just living disconnected, but stay connected. We have got so much media here at Salt. We've got a website, we've got app, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, social media. There's no reason to be mis- or uninformed, okay? So make sure that you jump onto those media platforms and find out what's happening. So can I encourage you, church, to not pull back, but to lean in and find out what's happening through all our media and social media platforms and posts that are gonna come your way. Is that cool? 
Awesome. Well, right now we've got our amazing senior pastor, Pastor Russell, who's going to bring the word. And maybe you're new uh, to Salt and you're thinking, who is that guy? Well, that guy that you've been seeing preaching is our senior pastor. He is an amazing man of faith. He's a fearless leader. He embraces change. He, he's the type that doesn't back down, but he is soaring with newfound faith and vision and leading us in this time. So he's got wisdom to give to us this morning and he's launching a new series that we've got going on called Facts Versus Truth. I like it already and I can't wait to hear what Pastor Russell is going to bring to fuel us this week. So why don't you give it up for Pastor Russell? Come on! Take it away, Pastor Russell. We're leaning in, we're with you. We can't wait to hear your word this morning. Kia ora koutou. Hey, it's great to be with you again this morning to share God's word. And thank you, Sarah, for that great introduction. As Sarah said, we're starting a three-part series today called Facts Versus Truth. And you might be thinking, well, you know, what's the difference between facts and truth? Aren't they the same thing? And, uh, well, the reality is, is that facts and truth are two different things. Uh, truth is always established on facts, but facts don't always lead to truth. Um, one way that we could grasp this is by that saying that things aren't always as they appear. I mean, sometimes we can be, have been led to have believed a certain thing about ourselves because of what people have said about us, or maybe the way that we've felt, but, but that doesn't necessarily establish the truth about us. Uh, I've heard it said that 90% of the things we fear don't actually happen. So, uh, you know, so we spend a lot of emotional energy fearing things only to discover that they're not real. I wonder if you can recall a time um, like I can when you're a child and you were maybe walking home from a friend's place uh, in the dark and you walk past that, that uh, scary looking bush and, uh, you know, the moonlight was causing it to cast a shadow and it was all dark and you wondered if there might have been something in that, in that bush, something scary, the boogeyman. And then you came walking past that same bush the next day in the daylight and realized, oh, there was nothing to fear at all. So apparent facts don't necessarily lead us to truth. And, you know, nowhere is this principle more apparent than in the whole um, uh, subject of, of seeking to walk in the freedom of Christ. And so this morning, part one of this series is, is that title, Walking in the Freedom of of Christ. You know, the Bible teaches us that Jesus has won a great victory for us on the cross when he died and, and uh, rose again. Uh, Jesus established and won for us an incredible freedom from our old, our old nature, that old sinful nature, that old fallen nature that, uh, you know, was really bound up in insecurity and fear and, and hurt and defensiveness and temptation and all that sort of stuff. That old nature, Jesus has won victory for us from that. And, uh, and this victory is accessed by faith in Jesus through making a confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as, as one's personal Lord and Savior will give us access to that uh, amazing freedom. Now, now, this freedom that we're talking about is, is established in solid fact. It's established in, in the facts about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that actually happened in real-time history. Um, Jesus came 2,000 years ago. God himself literally came into, into human, the human, um, human experience, the human world. He walked among us. He died on a cross. He rose again. These things are established uh, in empirical, historic fact. Uh, nobody has ever been able to uh, refute these things and prove them wrong. Uh, they're established. These things actually happened. And this is important for us to, to grasp because, um, because this freedom that we, that we have in Christ is not subjective. It's not something that, that uh, one day you feel like you've got freedom, the next day you haven't. And you know th those feelings are not leading to truth. The truth of it is established in the facts of what actually happened at that time. And uh, hundreds of years before this took place, the prophet Isaiah, he, he, he foretold that Jesus would come. He foretold that the Messiah would come and that he would die for our sin and that he would pay a price and bring freedom for us. In fact, we, uh, we, we read about this in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. Let me, let me read this verse to you. 
He says here, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Now, let me just um, expand a little on this for a moment. It says that he was pierced for our sins. This was long before Roman crucifixion was even a thing. And the idea that someone's uh, hands would be, be nailed uh, and their feet would be nailed to a cross, just as Jesus's were, and of course we understand that his side was pierced with a, with a spear. Uh, these things would have been foreign to the readers of Isaiah's prophecy. Uh, but, but of course this is actually what happened, and it was foretelling what was going to happen. This stuff happened in real time. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Now, a transgression is a, an act of disobedience. It's the breaking of a positive command. And then it goes on to say he was crushed for our iniquities. That's speaking of, of immorality and selfishness and greed. That's just that, that old carnal nature on the inside of us. It says the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Because you see, you've got to understand that the word peace in Hebrew is not just it's, it's the word shalom. It's, it doesn't just mean a peaceful night's sleep or, uh, you know, a peace from, from torment. Uh, what it means is a whole lot more than that. Shalom carries a whole lot more meaning. It, it carries things like, uh, like harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility. Jesus has won all of this for you and I, friends, on the cross. In real time, this was an established fact. When he, when he was punished, the Bible says here that uh, the punishment that brought us shalom was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are restored. We are made whole again. This is a picture of the freedom that Jesus has won for you and I. You see, just before uh, Jesus died, he said, uh, he said, it is finished. And he hung his head and died. And we could say, well, well what was finished? The, the complete winning of this freedom was finished for you and I. It was, it was complete, and now it's on offer as a gift to anyone who would receive, receive it by confessing faith in him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that uh, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but would have eternal life, would have shalom. It's a promised gift to you and I. Now, this is all fact. It happened. It happened. And we need to understand what happened. And we need to, to, to put our trust in this. You see, John 8 verse 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be, be yoked again, uh, or be burdened again to a yoke of slavery, to a, to a harness of slavery. Be free. Live in that freedom. Now you might say, Russell, well, you know, I've, I've, I've done that. I've confessed faith in Jesus. I've, I've asked him to enter my life. So, then, so then, then why do I still struggle with those nagging feelings of insecurity and, and, uh, and, and, and that sort of thing? You know, why do I still feel, uh, struggle with feelings of inferiority or, or temptation and that sort of thing? If Jesus has really set me free, why aren't I feeling and experiencing the freedom? Hey, I wonder if you've ever heard of uh, the, a phenomena called phantom pain. What phantom pain is, is it's when uh, somebody has had a limb amputated, maybe an arm or a leg, and they still have pain in that area as if the limb was still there, but it's not. Or maybe they get a sensation of, of uh, being itchy and they want to scratch it, but of course they can't because there's no limb. That's what's called phantom pain. And it's because the brain is so used to sending pain signals that even though the limb is no longer there, the brain will continue to do this for a period of time. And uh, it reminds me a bit of of um, this whole situation of of our of our lives regarding freedom in Christ. You see, our mind must be trained to think differently according to truth, not merely the facts that it is presenting. Our mind's got to be trained to think differently according to the truth, not just the facts that it, it's continuing to present. Um, another way that we can 
can understand this principle is is uh, considering the whole concept of slavery. Um, oftentimes it's been noted in history that when people have been uh, delivered from slavery, they've been given their freedom, it takes quite a long time for their, their mind to catch up as they still kind of live with a, with a, a slave mindset. Um, and, and they still continue to, to have the same sort of expectations that they had uh, when they were a slave, even though they're now free. Uh, it reminds me, actually, when I was growing up, we had, uh, had chickens out in the backyard, and, and um, our chickens used to just roam all over. The, and we didn't have a chicken run or anything. We just opened the door to the cage, and away they go every day, and then they come back in the evening for a feed and get up on their perch and sleep and lay eggs and things. But um, in order to uh, replenish our, our flock of chickens, whenever we had chickens that would die, we would uh, go along to a, a local poultry farm, which was back in the days when um, they, all the chickens were kept in very small, confined cages. Very cruel. It's great that that's not the case anymore, but uh, back then it was. And, and some of these, these chi- well, these chickens that we used to buy uh, from the poultry farm, they'd never, never been in a chicken run. They'd never been free range before. They'd only ever lived in this little confined cage. Some of them could hardly even walk. They just spent their whole life pretty much crouching and just eating and laying eggs. So we would put them in with our chickens. And it was interesting. The first thing they would do is that they would head for the nesting boxes and they would go and sit in that box. Why? Well, I suppose it was because that was that was what was most familiar to them, a very confined little area. And they'd stay in there just for, for several days. We'd have to literally go and get them and take them and put them outside and they'd just want to go straight back into the nesting box. All the other chickens would be up on the perches, but these ones would be sleeping in the nesting boxes. They'd been in there all day and all night. But eventually, after a period of a few days, they would start to come out of the cage and you'd see them walking on the green grass for the very first time. Some of their poor little feet were all scabby and and, and not nice to look at because of the wire cages. But gradually they began to walk in their freedom. And next thing they were running around with the other chickens and scratching and fluffing up their feathers in the dust and eating worms and having a great old time. But it took a while for their mind to catch up with their freedom. And that's exactly like you and I. Our mind will keep presenting us with the facts that we're not free, that we're insecure, that we're inferior, that we're all of these things. But let me tell you, friends, we need to start to live according to the truth, the truth of God's word, which says you have been set free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It was freedom that Christ has set us free. And so... Um, so we, we've got to learn to appropriate the truth of what Jesus has done for us. How do we do that? How do we appropriate the truth of the freedom that Jesus has won for us into our lives so that it can really and truly become our experience? Well, I think there's, there's three things that we can do. And, and what I'm about to share with you are very, very practical things that uh, that I've learned to uh, to do in my own life. This has come out of my own experience. And so I'm really passionate about this because I know this is true. I know this is powerful and it works. Let me take you through these three points. The first thing we need to do to appropriate the truth of our freedom in Christ so that it can become our experience is number one, we need to we need to know and believe the truth. You need to know and believe the truth about these things. That's the first thing we need to do. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Don't don't live out of those phantom pains. Don't live out of those facts, so to speak, that suggest that you're not really free. Start to know the truth. You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, it says this, It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How do you you get in Christ? Well, it's as simple as what I explained before. You make a confession of faith in Jesus. You invite him into your life to be your Lord and your Savior. I'm going to give people an opportunity shortly to to pray a prayer along those lines of literally inviting Jesus into your life. And and, uh, it says here, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. You say, yeah, but I might not feel like a new creation. It makes no difference. Remember what we said, the facts of what Jesus did on the cross. This is established. In fact, Jesus did it. In Galatians 2 verse 20, I love this verse. It says this. This is, this is how you know the truth. This is what the Bible says. 
Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, when you and I put our faith in Jesus, we were, we were crucified with Christ. We don't be, we, 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 it's not like we have to be nailed to a cross. Jesus did that for us. He did that for us. And by putting our faith in him, his death on the cross is appropriated to us. So in reality, we were crucified with Christ and we no longer live. Our old nature has been crucified. It's like that limb that's been cut off. Sure, there can be phantom pains, but the, the brain's just got to start to live out of the truth. Know the truth and believe it. Know and believe the truth. That is Point number one. Here's point number two. Accept your freedom as a done deal and choose to live in it as a present reality. Let me say that again. Accept your freedom as a done deal and choose to live in it as a present reality. Let me read for you a few verses out of Romans chapter 6, verse 8 to 11. Now, if we died with Christ, remember we've been crucified with Christ, if we've confessed faith in him, We've been crucified with Christ. If we die with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lived to God. Lives to God. Now listen to verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. In the Amplified Version of the Bible, verse 11 is put like this. It says, even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin and your relationship to it broken, but alive to God and unbroken fellowship with him in Christ. Consider yourselves dead to sin. Friends, I believe that we, there's a point where we need to consider ourselves free. We need to count ourselves as free. Why? Because of the facts of what Jesus did on the cross. Not because of how we feel on any given day. Not because of some thoughts that might, might assail our mind. We just need to count ourselves as, I'm free. Jesus won my freedom on the cross. It's finished. It's done. I'm free. Count yourselves as free. Reckon yourselves as free. That's the second point. Here's the third point. And this has got to become a, a regular practice. And that is, declare your freedom speak it out, confess it. Do you know that there is something incredibly powerful about the words that you speak to retrain your thinking? I know I seem to talk a lot about our thinking and, and that, but that is, that is because this is so powerful and it's so scriptural. We're transformed by the renewing of our minds. How do we renew our mind? We start to speak the truth over our mind. It's, it's incredibly powerful. When you know, I can wake up in the morning, and and and, and I'm sure I'm sure you can um, um, identify with this. You might wake up in the morning, and and uh, you know immediately you're kind of feeling a bit down, or a bit like life is not really uh, delivering for you what you'd hoped it would, and things can look a bit dreary. And you know, you can go on in the rest of your day like that if you want to. But there's something powerful when you recognize, hang on a second, that's, that's not how I want to spend my day. That's not how I want to live. In fact, if I think about it, there's a whole lot in this life I've got to be thankful for. There's a lot of good stuff that I've got. To, I can look out the window and there's no bombs falling out of the sky like there are in some parts of the world. You know, I've got stuff I can be thankful for. It's going to be a great day. Thank you, God, for all the good in my life. Let me tell you, you start to speak like that over your circumstances and over your life pretty soon your brain's going to catch up pretty soon your experience is going to catch up and you're going to start to live out of that truth is this just uh, is this just a positive thinking exercise no 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 this is about coming back to god's word and the truth beginning to speak out your freedom i am not insecure my old insecurities died with christ on the cross because I've been crucified with Christ. I'm not inferior. I don't have an inferiority complex. I don't have um, this, this sense of having to defend myself all the time. You might feel those things sometimes, but the reality is that is not you. They're phantom pains. 
begin to speak this truth over your life. As I said, this is not just a positive thinking exercise. This is about a truth of God's word exercise to retrain your brain to live out of that truth. I hope, really, really hope you're getting this this morning. And I and and I said earlier that that we need to declare this freedom and we need to do it regularly. Why? Because this forms a habit, and it takes a habit to cause your your brain to retrain. Um, it's an amazing thing uh, when you start to form a habit, and I think I think it takes about three weeks to begin to form a habit. If you can give it three weeks of regularly, every time those feelings or thoughts of insecurity or uh, whatever it is you el- else you might struggle with come up, if you can retrain yourself to immediately begin to confess God's word over that and just just to declare over yourself, no, that's coming from insecurity and I'll have nothing to do with that because I'm not insecure, because I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. I've been set free by the blood of Jesus. And uh, he or she whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You start to speak that and let that become your automatic trigger. Whenever those feelings come up, rather than the, than the trigger being, you know, go, getting sucked down the plug hole of depressed thoughts and feelings, let the trigger be, no, that's not me. That's not me. That may have been me once, but it's not anymore because in Christ I've been set free. You give it about three weeks and this will start to become a habit. And I'll tell you, friends, you will begin to change. You will begin to find a freedom like you've, you've never experienced before. And, and uh, for, for, some, for some listening today, this is brand new, brand new thinking. For others, we've been maybe walking with the Lord for 10, 15, 20 years. But, but if your experience is not all of that shalom that we were talking about earlier, then I encourage you to take up this challenge. Begin to step into this and begin to walk in the freedom of God. Don't live by the the phantom facts. Live by the truth of God's word. You know that um, before long you'll begin to experience the shalom of God and it'll be amazing. That wholeness, that uh, sense of completeness, all of the things we talked about before, prosperity, uh, welfare, tranquility. Wow. I hope you want more of that. I do. I'm going after it. So in conclusion this morning, not everything is as it appears. We've been called to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith in truth. Faith is not blind. I don't like the saying of blind faith. I don't think there is anything called blind. I don't think there's anything such as blind faith. My faith is founded on solid truth, which is founded on solid fact. The fact of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. God's word is the solid basis for our faith. And friends, there's a freedom available to you today. If you've never made a commitment of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ before, you can do that today and you can begin to live in the shalom of God. If you've made a commitment of faith in Jesus, but you've not yet begun to experience the full shalom, you can by applying these three principles. Let me just brief over them very quickly again before we close this morning. Number one, know and believe the truth of God's word. Number two, Accept your freedom in Christ as a done deal. You know, uh, consider yourself free. Number three, form a habit of declaring and confessing your freedom in Christ. Well, friends, it's been an awesome time being able to share with you this morning. And uh, my prayer for you is that is that you would take this seriously and that you'd begin to go after I just know there's some people listening to me right now, and this is hitting home for you. You are meant to be listening to this message right now. And something is grabbing a hold of your heart. Can I tell you right now, that is the Holy Spirit. And he is calling you. He's calling you home. He's calling you into a living relationship with Jesus. He is calling you into a a, a, a whole new place of freedom. You don't have to put up with the experience that you've had up up to date. You don't have to live out of those phantom facts of what have been spoken over your life. You can live according to the truth of what God's word says about you. And you can know freedom because Jesus won up for you. He went to great lengths to win that freedom for you. Hey, I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer with me right now to receive Jesus into your life. And I just invite you to pray with me and begin this whole new walk of freedom. Let's just close our eyes and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've made a way for each one of us to be set free. 
by, by coming to a place of faith in you. And so, Lord, all those that are listening to me right now, as I invite them to pray with me, Lord, would you come and minister to them right now? You just, right where you're at in your living room there, folks, you just, you just pray along with me. Pray these, this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today in faith that you died for me and that you won freedom for me. I invite you to come into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. I turn away from my old sinful nature and I receive your new nature now. Help me day by day to walk in freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer today, friends, I, I just congratulate you. What a great decision you've made. There's going to be an opportunity straight after the service for you to, to uh, jump onto a Zoom chat. It's a, a virtual foyer. Uh, there'll be some people to talk to. We'd love to engage with you because part of living in this freedom is to get, get involved in a community that's going to encourage you because we all need one another. We all need one another to do that. So, uh, so look, hey, have a great rest of the day. Jump on the, the virtual foyer on Zoom straight after this. And uh, Sarah, I'll hand back to you. Hey, church, well, what an awesome message. I can't wait already for part two of our series, Facts versus Truth. So make sure that you tune in next week. You know, we've got a philosophy in our church called Just Keep Showing Up. Okay, and so even though it's online and it's not on in person, you can still keep showing up. You can practice faithfulness and fueling yourself and, and just getting the Word of God in you and being encouraged by the Word of God. So we're looking forward to part two of that series that will be happening next week. Can I encourage you too, if you've made a decision to follow Jesus today, or you'd like some prayer, or maybe you'd like some support, maybe you'd like to even just talk to someone, please reach out to us. There's a button that you can click called Contact Us. It's on the bottom of every page on our website. Just click on that. It's almost like putting a virtual hand up, like, yeah, I'm here. Can I have a chat? Yeah, I'm here. I want to know more about Jesus. Maybe you just have questions. We would love to connect with you this week. So make sure you do that. Click the Contact Us button, and we will see you back here, same place, same time, 11 o'clock, 11 a.m., here, online. And maybe you also want to be part of our virtual foyers, our pre-service, post-service. Just hang out. Take some time to actually do life with one another. We can still do that, which is super cool. But guys, have a blessed week. That's our service wrapped up today. We love you heaps. We're believing with you. We're praying with you. We're just, yeah, we're believing that the best is yet to come and that this week is going to be a good, good week for you. We love you heaps. See ya.